With a quiet manner that can break quickly into laughter, George Brown is both a welcome and a familiar presence on our Vernon campus. A foreman lineman for the New England Telephone Company, his skills in repairing anything involving wires and circuits have made him a popular volunteer, a role he fills happily. But he's also known as a faithful husband to his two former wives, both of whom he lost to illness while a resident in Vernon. George was married to his first wife, Phyllis, in 1942, one month before being shipped out for military service to North Africa, where he served with the 976th Signal Service Company as a communications repairman. I just met my future wife, Phyllis, in 1942. Uh, and uh, we were married in September of 42, and then I left for the military in 1942, in November. I didn't see her again until uh, August of 1945. I was a power man. I um, repaired and maintained generators. I was also a telephone lineman and telephone repairman. Uh, communications as well. I spent many hours at the bench grinding crystals to the right frequency that we needed. And we lived on cigarettes and black coffee. <laughs> they finally loaded us on a big Navy transport on the way to the Pacific. But while we were at sea, the, uh, they announced that the atomic bomb had been dropped on Japan. And then a couple of days later, they announced another one had been dropped and then I don't know, a day or two later after that, they told us we'd be on the way to <coughs> ship's destination been changed to New York. You never heard so much noise in all your life. Boy, were those guys happy. Mm. We'd all been away for so long. You were going to go, yet to go home. When he returned from the war, he settled in Waterville, Maine, and began a long career with the phone company. When I got back to the States, was able to secure employment with the New England Telephone Company in December in Waterville, Maine. So I, we moved there and were there for 35 years, I guess. I, I was uh, an installer repairman and then I was a, a central office repairman, but I retired as, as in the supervisory position there in 1980. Any younger person seeking to understand the greatest generation would learn a lot by spending a day with George. His genuine smile springs from an easygoing personality and a connection to faith. In middle age, he joined the Advent Christian Church, where in the 1960s, in addition to his own son, he became a father figure to several young men in the denomination who would become church leaders. I've served in most of the offices in the church you know, as, a, as a deacon, as an elder. Well, I guess for probably 30 years there. So I've been involved in oh, church work, I guess, ever since 1947, probably. As a result of it, my son is a pastor, and his son is a pastor, so you never know what is going to happen throughout your lifetime. Retirement led him to our Vernon campus in 1991, where, within a year, he lost his wife of 53 years. In 1996, he met and married his second wife, B, also a resident of Vernon Birches. Together, they were a familiar sight on campus for years, both volunteering in a variety of capacities. In 2012, B succumbed to cancer leaving George a widower for the second time. And I don't know of a place uh, that anyone could find that would be better than this and get the service and the care and the love that we find here. I, I don't know where, where you go. I don't know how we'd survive, actually. I, I guess for us, it's just one step below heaven. <laughs> Despite his losses, George's gentle demeanor is matched by a resolute commitment to family, country, and faith. His is a profile in grace, another example of a resident we're privileged to serve. 
I, I think the one that's really touched me is the biblical verse that said, by grace you are saved through faith and not of yourselves, for it is a gift of God. And the eye has not seen or the ear heard the things that God has in store for them that put him. I'm looking for that. What else is there? Um, because this life itself, um, without some hope, um, would be meaningless. There has to be something better. <laughs>